What's up guys, I'm Becca and welcome back to Tidal Gardens. This video is all about misconceptions with local fish stores, or LFS for short. I've had tanks in the past, but I've been learning a lot more since I've been here at Tidal Gardens, and I've got some ideas to help out aquarists who aren't that familiar with how an LFS may work. If you like these top five videos, please help this channel out by subscribing, and be sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new uploads. Now, moving on to number one. The first thing that struck me as I walked into a fish store when I was a kid were the tanks filled with fish. Many stores have tanks that are absolutely filled with many different kinds of tropical fish, and that is exactly what I would assume a normal tank to look like. This is the first big misconception beginners get from the LFS. There is no concept of appropriate stocking levels. People see tanks jam-packed with fish and don't realize that they are not show tanks, they are holding tanks. Some of these holding tanks are filled with such high quantities of fish that it is basically a race against time to sell them out before they just die. The stores in this area now are a bit more conscientious about stocking levels, but that's not always the case everywhere you go. Either way, these stocking levels were not intended to be a long-term solution, but I can tell that they are still impacting people's expectations. People have called Tidal Gardens before, asking about fish stocking levels, and the conversation would go like, Tidal Gardens, how may I help you? Hi, I'm putting together a 55-gallon tank, and I was thinking about putting some fish like uh, tangs in there. Um, how many should I put in there? I was thinking about getting, I don't know, around like 15. <sighs> that is going to go poorly. And that is the first misconception with the LFS, stocking levels. Now, moving on to number two. We live in a digital age and the market is clearly transitioning to online sales. Looking through the selection of fish at an LFS, you may notice that pricing is higher than what you may find online. The misconception here is that those two fish are the same thing when in fact they are two incredibly different value propositions. Now, what's the difference? The process of shipping fish is very stressful for the animal and there's a huge risk of loss. In this situation, it is the LFS that is taking that risk for you. Some stores I know look at fish as a lost leader in the store to attract foot traffic, but they don't really expect to make money on. A fish fresh off a FedEx truck and a fish that has spent a month in quarantine and is eating well are two vastly different animals. As a store, Tidal Gardens has the benefit of purchasing fish at wholesale pricing. Even still, sometimes we buy fish locally at retail price from a store we know does a great job acclimating fish and doing extensive quarantining. Quarantining new livestock is an incredibly time and resource intensive process and most places just don't do it. If you find one, support the heck out of them because they are basically the unicorns of the industry. Don't get me wrong, it is tempting to try and save money just looking at the list prices, but the reality is you cannot save money on dead fish. So that is the number two misconception about the LFS, that they are price gouging on fish. Good stores are providing a significant value add and the price reflects that. Now moving on to number three. When I first started working at Tidal Gardens, I was naive in the sense that I thought every animal I saw for sale at a local fish store was suitable in any kind of aquarium. I came to this conclusion because I thought that the very fact of this animal was in the store in the first place and being offered for sale meant that it was okay. Needless to say, there are plenty of animals that an LFS carries that do not make good tank inhabitants. For example, some animals are very challenging to keep, like non-photosynthetic corals, flame scallops, etc. Some animals are super aggressive or grow to mammoth sizes. I've seen a store offer goliath groupers or even leopard sharks for sale. Like, what the heck? There are also bio grenades, like the sea apple, that could potentially nuke your tank when they die. There are so many reasons why stuff should not be in your tank. <laughs> now, it may seem like I am blaming stores for offering these animals for sale. This is the fourth misconception. It is not necessarily the store's fault that these animals are now here. You may be thinking, sure it is, they bought from their supplier when they shouldn't have. Well, the reality is always a little murkier the further up the supply chain you go. It is entirely possible that those problematic specimens were never ordered in the first place, and the store is every bit as unhappy about it as you are. The way wholesale works is different than how retail works. A successful retailer is successful by getting great stock in for their customer base and still making a profit. In contrast, a successful wholesaler is successful not by their ability to sell their top 10% best stuff, because let's be real, that stuff sells itself. Their success as a business hinges on their ability to sell the bottom 90%. 
It's all about volume. What often happens is they will attempt to move the bottom 90% at the expense of the local retailers. It happens all the time. A local store might place an order for some nice items they see on a price list only to receive about two thirds of it and the remainder is made up of stuff they never in a million years would have chosen to order. This same phenomenon happens to the wholesaler too, just one level higher. The collection company overseas doesn't need any help moving their best stuff. They want to move their basic staple stuff too, and will find ways to fill up orders with some less desirable items. I know of one wholesaler in particular that is so frustrated with this happening, he told the collector to go ahead and bill him for the filler he intends to ship him, but don't actually ship it to him. So long story short, don't be so quick to blame a local fish store for having some questionable livestock choices. There is a lot going on in the background that led to that animal showing up in that tank. Now finally, let's move on to number five. There is an overwhelming amount of information online on how to best do this hobby. With the internet taking over and people acting like professionals online when they aren't, it can be difficult to sift through all the seemingly contradictory perspectives to find truly helpful advice on a problem you might be facing. One area where the internet seems to converge in opinion is sentiment towards their local fish store. I would venture to guess that most of the mentions local fish stores get online is some form of criticism. A quick search on your favorite message board or Facebook group will quickly turn up some story from a disgruntled hobbyist about bad advice received from a local store. This leads to the misconception that local fish stores as a whole give inferior advice from what you can find online. You can find crummy advice anywhere, but there is one thing that is nice about LFS. You can see their work product right in front of you. Some of the loudest voices on the internet have no pictures of their tank even to back up their preaching. At least with a local shop, you can see how their tank looks and how well it's kept, and you can quickly decide if that is a tank you would aspire to. I guarantee if you could see the tank of every commentator online in person, you could quickly filter out whose opinion to consider. So that is my number five misconception. There is good and bad advice out there in many forms, but at least with the LFS, it is easy to check their work. Okay guys, that does it for the top five misconceptions about LFS. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any LFS stories of your own that you would like to share, please feel free to do so in the comments below. No names please though, I don't want the comments section to devolve into a witch hunt. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, and be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, so you don't miss any videos or live streams. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Happy reefing! Every animal I saw for stale, stale for stale <laughs> preaching at least with a local sh hello you know what we can just put people over that i'm doing a lot of this why am i doing a lot of this <laughs> in a digital age and the market is clearly transitioning transition all right guys that does it for the top five misconcession misconcessions wow <laughs> did i not press play <laughs>